This Tennessee Titans preview edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Bet a hundred dollars at WinBet and get a hundred dollar free bet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bet today. We're also brought to you by Run Your Pool. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash survivor to get your free entry in our NFL Survivor Contest. First place gets five hundred dollars cash and a two hundred fifty dollars gift card to the SGPN store. Hey, this is Pac Man Jones. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I am Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Two a days have begun. I'm sorry, I thought we were doing the Cowboys. Two a days have begun again. <laughs> we're back at it. We had a game, aka a little road trip, little away game. Yeah, a Can't little uh, team building experience. Coming back, getting ready to. I don't know. I, today, t- today's kind of a downer. Back to my underway, Sean. I know, right? Well, Cowboys. I mean, spoiler alert for those of you who not download the Cowboys episode. We are not on the under. No, you're looking at two people that are willingly fading the Dallas Cowboys, and uh, yeah, (laughs) I want to just go back to what in 2020 they were five and eleven against the spread. Uh, No coincidence. We were eleven and five picking their (laughs) games, and then it was. uh, Flip flop there. Titans have been a um, Titans have been a uh, interesting team for us historically. I feel like because there there were times where we were noted haters of the Titans. The the Titan fan base eventually got to us. I think things changed. Ryan, what do you mean? We gave them a pep talk. Remember? When Mike Vrabel was it before or after Mike Vrabel said he was willing to cut his dick off uh, to win a Super Bowl. I feel like it was like right around that time where we're like, okay, Mike Rabel, dog. Maybe we're all in on this team and been higher as of late. Uh, we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to uh, walking through the schedule, win total picks, all that. But yeah, I I, I don't know what uh, I'm looking at it now. Yeah, that was 2020. It, that was when they. Well, okay. no, that was after they got right because 29. Yeah. What, oh no, no, 2020 this was the playoffs of 2019. Yeah. No, when, 2020. No, no, it wasn't 2019 the year that they went to the playoffs uh, and went on a little run to the AFC Championship? So the, the cha- AFC Championship would have been in 2020, right? Do we the have- 2020 season? Oh, you're right. Yes, yes. No, the 2019 season or the 2020 season? I thought it was the 2020 season. Got it. We're. <laughs> uh, yeah. Either way, the the dick cut off comment uh, happened in January of 2020. Oh, you're right. So it was 2019. So in 2020, that's when the Ravens got their first playoff win against the Titans. Yeah, that's when they choked. And then, yeah, the Titans actually have been turning into chokers. Where, you know, in that 2019 season, they had that dog in them, went on a nice run, and then uh, one and done ever since in the playoffs. So all right, well, now that we got that sorted. Well, and yeah, they, they've they've been a team that seems to get a lot uh, out of the the juice or out of the fruit. Vrabel, for whatever reason, maybe the best of the Belichick disciples, seems to be a well coached team. They seem to always, we're always saying, like, wow, they, you know, they won a lot of close games. They were six and two last year, Sean, and games decided by three points or less, not even the one score. So, uh, I mean, they, they won on, they got hot, Sean, against the best teams they played all year. Five game win, win streak. Four of those games, they were dogs against Buffalo, Kansas City, Colts, Rams, and Saints. I, I mean, I, how do you explain that? And then and you look at the rest of the schedule, and it was easy. And they didn't they, they 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 tripped up. So you understand how they got the one seed? Easy schedule, and they 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 beat some good teams in the middle of the season, as dogs. Dogs. Oh, we're not we're not allowed to go. I see what you're doing. No, no, I just we gotta didn't talk about win bet, Ryan. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash w y n n b e t. Bet big, win bigger with WinBet. 
Oh man, they just uh, just added some really fun bets over on there, including first quarterback to throw for five touchdowns in the season. That is a uh, that's certainly a fun one to have. Of course, the NFL win totals. All we had, we're previewing all 32 NFL teams. We're giving you plays on all 32 NFL win totals, future bets as well. And you can get down on those over at win. So all you got to do, go to sports gambling podcast.com slash W Y N N B E T. So they know we sent you get those reduced juice on the baseball games. And of course, perfect time. New customers bet a hundred dollars, get a hundred dollar free bet. What are you waiting for? So much to choose from. All you got to do is head to sports gambling podcast.com slash W Y N N B E T. Bet big, win bigger. Offer subject to change terms, conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in the state where play through winbet is available. It was someone you know has a gaming problem. Call 1 800 52 4700. And also, uh, make sure you get in our free NFL Survivor Contest. Sports gambling podcast.com slash survivor. We're running it with uh, Run Your Pool. Highly recommend them for these kind of pools, whether Survivor, Pick 'em, uh, ATS pools, even they even do fantasy pools. We're giving away five hundred dollars cash and a two hundred fifty dollars gift card. Winner take all. No split in the pot. No second place. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash survivor. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash survivor. Get involved over there. All right, Ryan. While you were doing that, I went yeah. back and looked at the twenty nineteen season since I do have spreadsheets mm. uh, dating back to twenty eleven. Not many shows can say that, Sean. Spreadsheets since twenty eleven. Picking games in the public. We weren't. Uh, Tennessee was not hot down the stretch ATS that year for sure. We definitely rode them in the playoffs. Though. Yes, that's what it was. All right, so we had we've had an on and off relationship with this Tennessee Titans team. You know, we just did the uh, Cowboys, and I put on my uh, non biased hat, my uh, analytical Sean hat, and looked at the Cowboys and said, "How did this Cowboys team get better?" Yeah. And I really struggled to figure that out. Like I was trying to give them a benefit and. Coming into this 2022 Titans team, I think it's tough to say that same thing. Now, 2021, they were 12 and 5 uh, straight up, 10 and 7 against the spread, hit their over win total of nine and a half. What did we have them going into regular season? Uh, we we predicted 11 and 6, both okay. of us. We both ha- had them going to the playoffs. We, I think we were both fading uh, the Colts, maybe, but we yeah. both had like. Pretty substantial make playoff. Uh, it okay, like we, nice. From from my symbolage, it seemed like we maybe even locked that up. So we we definitely like them going into the season. Uh, ATS ten and seven for me, nine and eight for you. I mean, again, it, they they were what were they doing? They were winning outright as a small dog, big dog throughout the season. So obvious spots. I'm sure we were on. Uh, but the funny thing about their season, Sean. They they did uh, manage to lose to uh, our friends the Texans once. So yeah, they're they're very and they lost to the Jets too. So oh, I mean, they good were, point. They lost to the t- two of the the, the top. They three lost to Davis teams. Mills and Zach Wilson, and we're still twelve and five. I don't know. I don't know if that's an accomplishment or or you should be embarrassed. And you look at Tennessee; they're kind of an interesting team because in twenty twenty. They were putting up uh, 29.6 points per game, allowing 27. And then 2021, offense obviously cooled off, certainly not having Derrick Henry for the second half of the season, big part of it. 24.2 points per game, but their defense got they a lot good. better. 20.7 points per game. I, I I think when factoring in this Titans team, I, I think how they can get better is by not regressing tremendously on defense. So I, I don't know if it's necessarily better. Cause I don't know if they did anything to upgrade talent wise, but if they can maintain some of that mojo with the defensive side, I think that's their hope. Well, I mean, they were a near bottom team in DVOA the year before yeah. they bounced up to 12. So I, I, it wouldn't be crazy for them to maintain like mediocrity. It's not like they swung all the way to the top. Sometimes you see those defenses go from like worst to first, and then you're going to see something jump back to the middle. In this case, I think they're just good. I think they have good players. The front seven's good. They can get after the passer. Uh, Simmons is a dog. Uh, Landry's yeah. a dog. L- like the, the questions about this team is similar. I, I mean, honestly, the, the biggest thing I've taken away from this is that most teams have issues with their cornerback depth. Yeah. Uh, Tennessee Titans included um, shout out to the Hokies, Caleb Farley. Like he, he was, he's a hot, big talent, but he, ha- he 
he was one of the dudes that opted out of COVID, and he really hasn't played football in a long time. Kind of had some some issues. Uh, his uh, would he blow out his knee or something like that? And to your point, how did they Wait, get? Which, ba- what what corner are you talking Barely? about? Barely. Okay, because Christian Fulton, uh, they, they were saying had a pretty nice year two for them. No, no, F- Fairly was the the high draft pick yeah, out of yeah. Virginia Tech who who opted out when COVID happened. So I'm just pointing out like he's. He's got talent, but he hasn't played in a while. And to your point on teams that like how did how did they get better? I mean, you just look at the list, right? You look at the list of players that left the team. You look at the players that joined the team, and it, it's it's very obvious. Like in some ways, like if you want to play the conspiracy theory music for a, for a, for a, a team that is very clearly win now coach, win now quarterback, and win now defense. Yeah, I don't know if these moves. Are full blown win now. Well, and and right, Robert uh, Woods is a fu- is a great piece. He's if winning. You, if, if it's an over the top piece, yeah. I don't think Robert Woods is a transformative piece. I don't think Tra- Traylon Burks clearly. I mean, speaking out of both sides of my mouth in fantasy, love Traylon Burks, love the opportunity, but I will be honest. As I went deep for this preview, I like this offense's perspectives less than I did before, and. He's still good. Traylon Burks, still a lot of opportunity, still a lot of, a lot of volume uh, to go there. But I do wonder, I have questions, you know, I think there's questions of the offensive line. I think there's questions of the defensive backfield. And most importantly, I think there's questions of Ryan Tannehill because I don't know if you remember this, Sean, that Titans team was tied with the fucking Bengals in the playoffs yes. with the ball. Well, they with four. Do you want? Do, I I actually have this ready too. Sure, play because the audio. This is how close Joe Burrow was to not being I know. in the Super Bowl, and it's fucking Ryan Tannehill. Oh, I didn't. I didn't grab time stamp. Well, I I I go. know because I actually that was the only uh, playoff game I think I bet against the the Bengals. Third down and five at the forty. Thirty-three seconds. Hendrickson is back in there for the Bengals. Steps forward, up in the air, intercepted. Logan Wilson's got it. Okay, now if uh, Westbrook Inkine 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 Inkine, if he makes the catch, it hits him in the chest. It goes through his hands and hits him in the chest. If they make that catch, there's twenty. It's probably twenty-five seconds on the Bengals' forty-eight yard line. They're they're less than ten yards. From a, a game-winning field goal with two timeouts in their pocket, and Ryan Tannehill, you know what? And is I, going to the conference <laughs> championship again. No wait. Uh, oh, you're right because that was they the, were the uh, one seed. That was the division because line. they were the yeah, fucking yeah. one seed, Sean. They had a buy. Well, I, just in my head, both one seeds lost. By the way, I think at that point I was actually rooting against uh, the uh, Tennessee. T- well, no, no, because they would have had to go to overtime. It wouldn't have been a game-winning field goal because the uh, Bengals won 19-16. So what does send it to overtime? No, it was 16, 16. Tennessee had the ball. Oh, you're right. Oh, because then they, the Bengals got it. Yeah. yeah, yeah and bad. and again, what whether you're I think I was what, laying what I was laying three and a half. So I was almost rooting against them. Whether at that point. I mean, either you're impressed by saying, wow, you know, holding the Bengals to 16 points, that's pretty solid. Yeah. Or just I mean, I don't that one play. They, were, they they really got a ton of pressure on Joe Burrow. I remember that game, and that's yeah. why. That wasn't that one throw wasn't Tannehill's fault. But he didn't play his best game. But my the point in saying all this is, I mean they they, they were close to being in the conference finals two out of three years. Well, here's here's and the what, team and they beat the Bills. They beat the Chiefs in the regular season. Here's they beat what, the fucking Rams in the regular <laughs> season. They beat good. Like they beat good teams and let strain, down against bad teams. Fucking team. Here's the thing that you have to beat the Niners. Have to have to think on with the Titans, right? Is the Tennessee Titans? Yeah. Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill clearly is in his own head with the drafting of Malik Willis. I saw it with yeah. someone who is mentally weak with Carson Wentz when Jalen Hurts, aka, Dog. came into the locker room and there were reports. He he walks around the locker room. Now, he doesn't walk around like a backup quarterback. And it's almost like we're forgetting that Tannehill was broken by Adam Gase. Yes, in Miami. he was a he was a receiver in college. <laughs> um, and wow, okay. no, was, that was it a long, Yeah, it was a long time. No, but ago. I'm saying like I think there's. I think if you if they draft Malik Willis, there wasn't there, there was that story about him like going to therapy because 
Uh, he was having trouble dealing with the yeah. season. He got to a really dark place. Well, maybe he's maybe he maybe I think I think Tannehill's in his own head to some degree. Malik Willis is a is a dog. I I mean for Malik Willis' sake, I would have liked him to to see him go to a place where he had an opportunity to play earlier. Um, I well, still think there is a chance he he will play and see some action this season. Do you think Tennessee is a smart franchise? I mean, I think I they think actually have been drafting pretty well. But coming back to your your point earlier, where this is a win now team, you're towards the end of the Ryan Tannehill window. But, you're signaling that by drafting Ryan Tannehill. But then why do you let AJ Brown walk out the door? I'm not going to be the because uh, you're not win now. I, I'm not going to be your table thing where you're like, oh, the team's not going to be the same. But I do think. AJ Brown made Ryan Tannehill a much better quarterback. Julio uh, and well, AJ Brown and Julio missed a bunch of time, um, but I definitely think AJ Brown is a huge loss, and it does seem like that Traylon Burks needs to get his shit together to even be close to AJ Brown. Now Robert Woods, maybe he's a great mentor. Maybe they're going to figure it out. They also lost uh, offensive linemen. They lost uh, Janoris Jenkins. They lost. Deontay Foreman, who was a nice piece behind Derek, like the, even the piece behind Derek Henry is a question mark. If Foreman was the first guy behind Derek Henry who looked like he could actually hold his own, they lost the right tackle. Yeah, I, I mean they they just no, there's a lost lot. a lot of they lost they, they Chester Rogers caught passes for this team. The receiving core could be very, very the, the, the people who catch the passes and the people who defend the pass could be very poor, and that's a problem when you're in a passing league. And well, I, I don't know if they're. I I still think their their back end is going to be okay, and I do think uh, you're. I'm I'm on board with what you were saying as far as like well, the guys they well, the guys outgoing, um, you know the guys they brought in that kind of stuff. Uh, being a downgrade, but I I do think we have to f- factor in. Um, Vrabel is kind of a dog when it comes to this he stuff, is. and he has a little bit again smaller sample size, a, a shade of Tomlin, where he has not had less than nine wins as a head coach, and it's been uh, 2015 last time the Titans won less than nine periods. So this team seems to figure so he's out good. he's stable. No, he, the the team seems to figure out a decent floor. What if I mean do Vrabel has not always been all in on Tannehill. Oh no, no. This is a transition. Yeah. What they drafted Malik Willis. Think, think about what they're going like if 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 we're even close to to like think about what they could pull off this year. They could pull off getting rid of Tannehill, no drama around that. Seeing what Malik Willis has, getting a high enough draft pick to get one of the quarterbacks next next year if Willis isn't the guy. And having a relatively quick rebuild, or just can, saying, "Hey, we're just going to keep drafting quarterbacks. We'll start now. If now is the time, we're ready. If not, Malik Willis goes next year." Yeah, but I, I think if you're the, I think there's here's what wor- I'll say. I think there's a world where uh, Malik the- Willis, who looked who looked good, had flashed some athleticism. Vrabel ended up pulling him out sooner than he wanted to because. Uh, Malik was running too much and not not like going through the progressions, which I think would be his issue, especially yeah. rookie year. But I think there's a world where if Tannehill struggles, if he's in his head early, well, this team has enough veterans and enough firepower around them that you remember we saw this with um w- this is a very similar to the Baltimore Ravens where uh, Lamar Jackson came in those last five or six games. Uh, kind of righted the ship after yeah. Flacco clearly hit the wall. This is, I mean, there's oh, that, there's a lot of comparisons good, to this Harbaugh Ravens Tannehill transition. Flacco, I like it. I mean, don't you say? Don't you see a Tannehill Flacco comparison? I I didn't before, but yeah. Look, I I here's what I'll. You said you were okay with the back end. Uh, Fulton was an okay player. Fairly has been very diff, very difficult for him to stay healthy. There's a rookie behind him. I think the safeties are nice, but if they if they the cornerback play could be a problem. When oh by the way, Davis Mills, Brandon Cooks, Nico Collins, and then uh, on top of that, we were discussing this pre-show, but like Bud Dupree uh, got in a little bit of trouble. I don't know what yes. that's going to mean to the team. 
Uh, breaking news. Uh, well, Bud Dupree got into it with a uh, Walgreens employee and, and it ended up getting to engage in a physical altercation. Mm, okay. Dupree left the scene before officers arrived. It sounds like he's going to get six months, uh, whatever, community service. Nice. Some, he's not going to do suspension. He's not going to do jail time. But we don't know. Um, we don't know if the NFL is going to weigh in. They, the NFL, like I think his 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 criminal case just got settled. And the NFL is trying to set a precedent. Hey, we're going to let the criminal process yeah, play out, and then we'll chime in. Uh, th- he didn't get any jail time, but he did get probation, fines. Um, you know, I, obviously, I'm, I'm sympathetic with maybe some of the Walgreens yeah. staff driving you crazy. He obviously yeah. took it too far. Uh, you know, I mean. Uh, they, if it's a male employee, I'm, I'm he less opposed to popping well, a guy, but and and he certainly matters because the the like, I feel I mean and he he's big to their defense. His PFF grades aren't, but like if if they sit him down but, for, but he's like a kind of veteran guy who straw that stirs the drink. If he if they sit him down for six weeks, here here's here's to what me, I'm the looking defense at. is all about Simmons in the interior like it's that. True. That and then and Landry, I think we we loved Landry coming out of Boston College, and and he's been good. I think. And the safeties, like they're they're good too. Like they're they're strong up the middle. They just gotta, I don't. They just gotta stay healthy on the back end. And I think honestly, back to the receiver position, Sean. Did you do you know who Racy McMath is? No. Back up, uh, back up wide receiver for your Tennessee Titans hmm. at LSU. Racy McMath, what a name. You know, uh, well, anyway, but when you look at the depth chart. It's like th- this is the. Again, the guy who dropped that pass that allowed them to lose that conference championship game, he's start. He's he's right now he's the starting slot receiver. Traylon Burks, Robert Woods, uh, Westbrook, and Kinney. Is that yeah, Westbrook so. Akine? Akine. Um, what about a uh, what about Kyle Phillips? I I was listening to some fantasy, sure, and they were trying to make a compare. Sure, uh, they were trying to talk him up about maybe being like a deep dip best ball play. When has I, anyone done anything on that team that isn't? One of the studs, well, it, it, AJ Brown, it, and the they studs. let him go. So here's the, here's what I think. I think the the offense will be slightly worse. I mean, even if Traylon Burks comes in and has a good rookie year, I, I do think AJ Brown helped elevate Ryan Tannehill's game. What? Do Do you disagree? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, I I you know. say it ain't so. <laughs> no, I'm saying pretty obvious there. Uh, I feel like we haven't talked enough about their offensive line. PFF no. has them ranked 27th, worse than the Giants, huh? Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> and Trevor in the YouTube chat points out an O line near the bottom with an yeah. older Tannehill does spell disaster. That again, that's why I think there is a world where they bring the young kid in because he can create some. How do you help out a shitty offensive line? You give them a mobile quarterback, Ryan. And I think uh, I think. Ryan Tannehill's time over in under. Tennessee may be a little shorter than we expect. Uh, so, but it's, also they're a team that because I keep going back and forth. They're also a team that consistently beats their pie thing. Well, well that's true. And, and at some point, you would expect that to regress. Be, uh, like I, I get it. Like maybe Vrabel's this amazing motivator. Yeah, but it 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 does seem like they've just been on on the right side of lucky. And I and I hate to say that because you can't really quantify it, but. It does seem like this team they they understand the moment they understand when they need to show up. They're generally uh, motivated to play good teams like we've talked about, and they they definitely are capable of losing to anyone. And honestly, like that creates a super low floor, especially when the offensive line might be shitty. And Tannehill has shown some Carson Wentz like Matty Ice tendencies of just like throwing the ball up in the air. Big Ben, think about it. Like he, he the does. ball just starts popping out. Like all of a sudden, whoo. And again, like to to reflect on how easy the schedule la- la- was last year, how healthy they they mostly remained, and how good they were in close games. Again, it's at some point that will regress. And so I think what's a good re- recipe for helping regression? You know, letting a bunch of players leave because maybe you're not trying to win this year. And you don't you don't want to be your everyone's like pointing at the Texans. They're the team tanking. It, honestly, after now that we've wow, pre- right. Now, oh man, let me get my gloves now on. Now that we've previewed all four teams in the division. Do would you I would I think this team resembles a team tanking the most. Is that a hot take? <laughs> yeah, of course. I what? mean they're they're starting a veteran quarterback. 
you're tanking if you start Malik Willis or trade no they, Ryan Tannehill because they this is a smart we we agreed earlier it's a smart franchise so they want to yeah. they don't want to put Malik Willis in a bad spot a great spot I is think, is I, when they're three and they're three and seven and he yeah. comes in week eleven for a, to run out the season like you said what did when did Lamar come in that first year yeah la, like last four or five games uh, so you're not it, it's lower leverage right the team's out of it w- what does it mean if you're already out of it gonna have a better draft pick. So if Malik Willis sucks, you can go out and draft fucking Will Levis if that if that's your guy. And, and minus the the Giants at home cakewalk, um, they do have a I, I think kind Fuck of a you <laughs> a, a tougher schedule to start according to well, win total. They're twenty uh, first hardest. easiest. Oh, see, I got twenty four. Yeah. Okay, whatever. But it's it is a har- much harder schedule than last year. That's the best way to to quantify it. Hey, want a fun nugget? About their schedule, Sean. So uh, typically, we would say having the first place, having the play, like the place, this the place you finish, really doesn't affect a ton because it, it it alters three games out of seventeen. But when you look at the three games they get versus yeah. their division rivals, Kansas City, Buffalo, Green Bay. Uh, that. Oh my God. That feels like a tremendous swing on uh, a number of these teams, especially when you look at like oh Denver, Chicago, and and whoever they're playing out of the. I mean, it's and the Dolphins like that's that's a big difference, and you know when you're betting on the Texans to win the division at thirty five to one, you need all the losses you can. <laughs> Some close <laughs> losses queued up, I think, but that's the reality. Is maybe. Maybe how they start can influence their decision making around when to bring Willis in and when to really press. Because, boy, they have a similar stretch in the middle of the schedule again, where you know we probably would have picked some losses last year in the stretch that they got hot, and we're going to do it again. And maybe they'll get hot again, but it, it certainly it's, is a. It yeah, feels like I, a I, bigger. I keep going back and forth because I do think they're going to be worse, but they did win twelve games last year. So even if they regress, oh man. I, I, they could regress down to nine and eight or regress down to 10 and seven. I, I mean, it sounds like you're going to well, end up having them way short of the, the win total. I mean, first of all, Pythag had them as a 10 win team last year. Yeah. And they beat it by two. Yeah. So I'm, if this team is not as good and regression happens, like we're in the realm of, of being, you know, not far off from being a seven, I, I guess, eight, to, nine, I guess team. I'm putting them. I'm not totally there yet, but in that Tomlin Steelers zone where they seem to be a team that they figures do. out how to beat the Pythag. Vrabel has a low floor or high floor. <laughs> he's just he's the guy he's shoving <laughs> Pythag in a locker. <laughs> Here, cut my dick off. Take it, Pythag. No! Uh, you just gotta love a coach who's willing to put it all on the line. Trevor, of course, asking, uh, was it Juan from Walgreens that uh could have been <laughs> that it instigated Bud Dupree? All right, Ryan, uh, let's get to the schedule. Before we do that, have you been to oddstrader.com? Have you been to oddstrader.com slash blue wire? So they know we sent you. And why would, if you haven't, uh, what are you waiting for? Best place to compare odds from all the major sports books. Get the best sign up codes, best promos. Again, they're always throwing new ones out there. You want the best ones. Uh, provides you with key player stats, game stats, injury reports, projected weather. It is your one stop shop for handicapping, live play by play updates, and a bet tracker. So, again, any sort of, uh, you know, tools you need, especially getting the best prices, you can get it all over at oddstrader.com slash blue wire odds trader, the number one site for all your game day bets and sleeper, baby. Ryan and I were just talking about our uh, sleeper dynasty team. It's on the rise. Got some, uh, got some young bucks going to be carrying our dynasty team. Highly recommend using sleeper for your fantasy league. If you aren't already, they already have 4 million users. Uh, they've really been on the rise. Great uh, interface there, but I, you know, being a DJ love the over under uh, game they have. And uh, all you got to do, go to sleeper.com slash SGP, hundred percent deposit bonus up to $100, open up your phone, hop in there. And NFL right is around is right around the corner. So they're actually going to have your fantasy team integrated with the player prop. So whether you're really high on your team that week, or maybe you think your team's going to lay an egg, you can go over under on the player props right from there. Sleeper.com slash SGP, get a hundred dollar match on your first deposit. 
Terms and conditions apply. See sleepers terms of use for details. All right, some some fun nuggets real quick. We, you know, we haven't mentioned Derrick Henry. Is it worth mentioning Derrick Henry? I mean, he's a straight dog. dog. Uh, I like, like Derrick Henry. He's got like 900 carries in the past three <laughs> years. Which, well, it's so it's uh, I, again, this is probably inside baseball, but I I think our audience of diehards will appreciate it. Every sort of like analytical based fantasy thing is just you cannot project injury. You cannot project injury, and then they keep saying, "Well, now that Derrick Henry he finally hit that injury wall, we can't be high on him." It's like it's one or the other. You can't. I, I just. I just don't understand how you can be in on Saquon and Christian McCaffrey and out on Derrick Henry for injury stuff. Like that to me makes no sense. What am I missing, Ryan? Is it because it's is it because the numbers say Derrick Henry's more likely to repeat because it's a volume thing? But like I test that guy. Like that guy clearly has the ability to handle more injuries than the average human being. All right, so you have a little the LeBron DNA thing. Like yeah. Clearly, he's he's a badass, but the, you know there only have been so many people that could handle basically 370 carries. Like that's the problem, right? He went north of that back to back 300 carry season. He got hurt last year. He had a relatively low workload. Still got 218 carries. Remember how much he was dominating the world when he got hurt. He yeah. was going to be, I mean, he, he, he was, was still like top 10 in a lot of fantasy things. He was on pace to, to, I think get near 400 carries. So clearly they, you know, Vrabel ran him hard and maybe that was the difference. Maybe having Derrick Henry lets you win close games, but now they bust, you know, they, 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 <laughs> they, they fucked up the engine. It's not the same engine. They, they, they got a little bit of a, he was, he was 14th in the league and he played eight games. <laughs> I mean that's insane. The offensive line has taken a step back, so that he that beat Javante Williams, who played seventeen. He beat Devin Singletary, played seventeen. AJ Dillon, Daryl Williams, DeAndre Swift, who played five more games. Elijah Mitchell, James Ro- uh Daryl Henderson Jr. There's so many guys he beat. So All right, here, here's a fun fact. There, uh, and there, and he's just fun to have on your team. All right, thirteen teams. Since 2005, have won 10 or more games and had a zero, a below zero DVOA. Okay. Three of them were last year the Bengals, the Raiders, and the Titans. Mm. Of the previous 10, only three had above 500 years the following year. But what about the the, uh, one out of three will do well? I've already picked the Raiders to do well. So now you have to fade the Bengals. I, I think I the, have to fade the Bengals and the Titans. What were uh what were their what was their DVOA in 2020? Because I feel like it wasn't I guess it was it must have been over one, but I feel like it wasn't Well, and the other thing I was going to bring up uh from the DV, from the uh the chapter is they also have a metric estimated wins. Basically like um slightly different factors obviously than Pythag and that metric for last year was eight versus the the actual twelve they had the year before. Pythag nine point two estimated eight point four uh, win loss eleven and five. So to your point, uh, the last couple of years that they've overperformed. But if you go re- go back five years, two thousand seventeen, two thousand eighteen, they underperformed by uh, a win to a win and a half both those years. So. Look, Vrabel. Vrabel's been plus EV. That's that's no doubt. I was trying to stall as I was looking for uh, that what you asked me, and I'm not I'm not finding it. So I'll come back to it. But but anyway, back to Derrick Henry, and I, I think if Derrick Henry stays healthy, if he can be a freak, and if he can be the you know the, the what is it, Jim Brown or like Dick Dickerson that, that that can just be, can go plow through this wall of 370 characters. Run through he, a motherfucker's if, face. If he can continue to do this, great. But if if not, that 31st ranked pass blocking efficiency last year is going to bite them right in the ass. And so I, it's just hard to s- how many years can they continue to do this? We were high on them last year. I'm le- I'm way less high. Mm. Way fewer dogs. Vrabel's a dog coach. Fewer dogs in the dog or in the house, not the dog. dog house. They let one dog get away to Philly. We're hungry dogs. Run faster, Ryan. Okay. 
Can we? Do we have to do anything before we go through the schedule? No, we already did the reads, Ryan. That's why. Oh, wow. That's how seamless they are. You didn't even realize. You thought you were experiencing content. <laughs> well, it is content, right? It is. All right. Um. Bringing up the schedule, Tennessee Titans open the season against the Giants. We're laying way too many points after I've done this. You, even you agree <laughs> now that we've done this preview at Buffalo on Monday Night Football. Then the Raiders come to town. Then at Colts. Now they ha- they have we didn't bring this up, but they did go two and zero oh against the Colts last year, which yep. you know that that's important if you're trying to win the division. Uh, I certainly don't like them. I mean, look, Buffalo's got revenge on the mind from last year. I'm obviously picking my Giants to upset them week one because okay. that that is just a right. To, are you kidding me? Over two to one on the money line. What are we doing? I love the Raiders this year. Uh, that that could be a tough. Match. Yeah, I, I think I'll go. I'll go two and two because I think between the Raiders and the, uh, I mean, Titans at home week one. That's a lock. Two and two. Yeah, I All think right. it's fair. I mean. I think to your point, that Raiders team, eh, at Titans at home, I like their chances. But then you have a road division game. You just beat them two zero the year before. I don't know. I'm not high on the Colts either. I I could see them going three and one. Yeah, I'll go. Actually, I'll go three and one. I mean, if I but make- I, I want to set the narrative for Malik Willis to come in, but I also like this Titans team. I'm really torn. Zero oh, and four. Oh wow. Yeah. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm, I'm just, I mean, I think they're going to lose the game where they're favored by a touchdown. I know they're generally good as dogs, but I, I you know, let's do it. Fuck it. Oh, and four. Then we have next four at Washington early by week. This is maybe good. Maybe bad. I can't tell. Then we have after the commandos in the bye, we have Colts at home. So co- two Colts games early. I don't know if that's good or bad. Matt Ryan's probably still healthy at Houston. At Kansas City on Sunday Night Football, and then Denver at home. Who? Where are well, they? You did, you did five games, I think. Did I? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. No Denver game. At Kansas City at home on Sunday Night Football. Man. All right. So you know what? Uh, I'm gonna go one and three here because I went three and one the previous, and I think which I think ga- they split with the Colts. It? Yeah. I think they can beat Agreed. the Commanders, oh. and I think. I think on the road they can beat the commanders. Yeah. I'm pretty low on the commanders, Ryan. Commander Wentz will still be there. So, so you're gonna have him go oh and eight. The further <laughs> the further explanation of the bad team, like not only did uh seven out of those ten previous teams go five hundred or less, uh half of that, more than half of it, sorry, cratered to near the bottom of the league. And so again, maybe this could be a team that craters. I'm going to go one in three. Yeah. I went one in three as well. It's a good, it's a good pick. All right. Next four Denver at home, green Bay on Thursday night uh, at green Bay on Thursday night football. Jesus Christ. Be- I mean, again, this was the stretch that they got hot last year though. We yeah. would have been doing the same thing that stretch last year. And then they went, they did pretty good Bengals at home at Philly for fuck's sake. This is a Sean. This is a tough two, two and two. This but is, I, this is more than a mediocre schedule two and two, but I think it could be worse. I think they actually could beat the Bengals. I think, I think yeah, at I like Philly, them beating the Bengals. at Philly and at green Bay, I think are tough. And I think they can handle the Broncos at home. So I'll go two and two. I feel like the Broncos are the t- kind of team that that could give them trouble. They're going to stretch the field. <sighs> KJ Hamler sighting. You're going two and two. Go two and two. One and three. No, is that this is too much, right? <laughs> There's not a lot of minuses in the on the list here. One and three. Next four. <laughs> Jacksonville. Oh, hot, 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 hot. At Chargers, Houston, Dallas Cowboys on Thursday night football at home. I think they beat the Jags. Yeah, I think this is a good run for them. Malik, I'm going to go three Mal- and one. Oh, Malik Willis, game one at home Ooh. against the Jags. I'm going three and one here. Yep, because Malik Willis is. You know what? There. I'm going to go four and zero. Oh. 
Malik Willis comes in, they go ah, four and zero. Texans are going to be a tough matchup for them. At home, they can win. Our Texans will show up, but two and two. What are you going? Three and one. Four and zero. Four and zero. I do like the idea of him winning that game, Jacksonville at home. All right. Uh, yeah, let's have him beat the Cowboys too. Is that three and one? Next up, they might want to lose some of those games at Jacksonville. Final game of the year. Is that a win? Win. I just can't. I struggle predicting Jacksonville wins. <laughs> I'll give. Uh, they just never happen. I'll give them the win as well. Uh, so I have them at six and eleven. Wow, Ryan, you are cold on this Titans team. What do I got? Nine and eight. That What's right? funny is that six and eleven has them tied for second place <laughs> with the uh, Houston Texans. You have some, Brian. Are you going to predict any team over I, ten wins I besides might, the Broncos? It, would it be breaking the rules if I reevaluate and pre- predict the Texans to go nine and eight? No. Or yes, yes, it would. Okay, that might. Be you can good. save any updates to predictions yeah. for the division preview. We might have to do something like that. So I'm at six and eleven. You're at. What ele- did I have? The te- no. 11 and 6? No, you missed the miscounted. No, cuz oh, I think I, 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 I counted a, I counted a loss 9. No, you you 3 and 1. 1 and 3, that's 4. 4 and 4. 2 and 2, 6 and 6. Then you have them finishing 5 and 0. Oh. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, make the Uh-oh. um make that last uh 4 and 0, oh, make that 3 and 1. Got it. So I got them at 10 and 7. Cuz I think they could they're not going to win all those. They could, they'll fumble one of these Jags. So you got them. Uh, yeah. You got them. It looks like you got them teed up to win the division. <laughs> we might need some late adjustments to our AFC South calibrations. I mean, the first team we did was the Jags I mean, like two I, months ago. I don't like them to win the AFC South at plus one seven. You got them to win them the AFC South right now. What am I, what am I, what do I, what do I have prediction prediction wise? 10 and seven, nine yeah. and eight for the Colts, six yeah. and 11 for the Texans. Yeah. But I think. I'm still on Texans to win the division as a bet there. Like yeah, win total wise, and what's their their win total is only super low though, right? Not uh, who the Texans. Texans is four and a half. I mean, yeah. So I like shout a- out to the fantasy expo where everyone got a, a delicious <laughs> taste of me touting the Houston Texans. All right, let's talk. Let's talk futures because I do think there's some under right clear under here under Kramer's a, on the under a rare disagreement, Sean. But Ryan, you know what we don't disagree on? Great coffee makes a great life. Love me some trade coffee. So happy they're back and so happy you guys get to experience some delicious trade coffee. Starts out with a sweet coffee quiz. All you gotta do is go to drinktrade.com slash SGP. Fill out your coffee quiz, what flavors you like, what flavors you don't. Whole bean um, or ground beans. I'm a whole bean guy. Get you get you a coffee maker that automatically grinds up the beans. The taste is phenomenal. Uh, really, really like the flavoring, and and I think they might be releasing the the uh, the coffees we picked, Ryan, so that you guys can match our coffee, our coffee palette as well. They they've delivered over five million bags of fresh coffee. Got some here going right now in my SGP coffee mug. Get that at the store. But really, drink trade. It is it is delicious. It's a great way to start your day, or if you're pounding through twenty four hours of best ball drafts, whatever it is. Uh, trade coffee has you covered and the fully customizable stuff is awesome. It's also so convenient. Just getting fresh, great coffee delivered to your house. All you got to do is go to drink trade.com slash S G P and uh total $30 off your first order. Plus free shipping We're talking about 40 cups of coffee for free drink trade.com slash S G P and trade will find you a coffee. You love drink trade.com slash S G P. We're also brought to you by Dave. Y'all got a buddy you you hit up and you're a little short of cash. Dave is that buddy, right? And and honestly, it sucks. I've been in spots where oh no, you ever did that move where you? It's been a while, but you uh, take a blank ATM envelope, deposit, you know, uh, sixty dollars in there so you could withdraw these forty fifty dollars back. Again, if you're running on empty, no shame asking for a little help. And and Dave makes it really easy. Dave's a banking app that uh, can help you get up to five hundred dollars instantly with extra cash. Again, it's more money to just you know 
help you stress out a little bit less. There's no interest, no credit check needed. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch and need some extra help, download Dave. Think of it as a helping hand from future you. Download the Dave app from the App Store right now. That's D A V E. Sign up for an extra cash account. Get up to five hundred dollars instantly. For terms and conditions, go to Dave.com slash legal instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve member F D I C. Uh you wanna you wanna talk about betting on the Titans? Yeah. Alt lines? Are you taking okay. the over? It's over nine and a half. Over nine and a Guns half. Guns to your head. Are you passing? Is this your first pass? No. But I, I do think they're a they're a tough team to figure out because I do think they still have this decent Sounds like a floor pass. built in. And I like the uh, I like the fact that win bet is giving me a plus one thirty five. If it's close, I'm gonna take the plus one thirty five over the minus one fifty. Disagree with the floor. I think okay. if they're rolling Willis out there, the floor is the very bottom. They're they're gonna want to well, see what they and have. And Ryan, that's my first future bet. You can find this uh, online. Malik Willis, rookie of the year, 50 to one. Right now, it is just a crapshoot with rookie of the year odds. I know, Kramer, you were talking about maybe getting down on Sam Howell, but I mean, Kenny Pickett. Would you say 70 to one over at WinBet? Yeah, 70 to one right now Mm. over on WinBet. So uh, if you like Sam Howell, I mean, Sam Howell probably has an easier path in a lot of ways. I just don't like his talent as much. I'm not going to bet on a commando. But he certainly has an easier path to playing time. So I, I think it's 70 to 1. I still like your bet. Uh, but I'm going to go with Malik Willis. I've seen uh, like explosive athleticism, even in that small sample size. I think he's a, he's just a fun guy to root for. So I'm going to take Malik Willis uh, 50 to 1 because there's injury, uh, Tannehill sucking. There's a world where he gets in and he, if he gets in and maybe wins like five, six games, but looks really good doing it. And if one of the receivers doesn't pop, uh, I, I think his path is there. And at fifty to one, I'm in on that. Yeah, I mean, and we've seen some guys. And also, too, I think there's going to be uh, some design packages for him. Which again, um, you know, Tannehill is sneakily a, a rushing quarterback. Gets you like seven a year. The past couple of years, rushing touchdowns. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Malik Willis takes some of those. It's interesting to see the uh, the variance in the rookie of the year market too, because you know Pickett's still near the top, even though it, it certainly does not seem like he's going to be starting football games early. Uh, Pickens has dropped all the way into the top five at ten to one. I know it's insane. Uh, it's it's a bunch of running backs. The Forty to one play we talked about that gave out a while back. That's, I know that's looking amazing. We, we need and to, they, there's barely been any action. We need to, you know what? That's what we need to uh, record an episode just updating some of these sweet sweet picks. But to see Desmond Ritter as the next quarterback at twenty five to one seems crazy to me because he, if nothing else, it seems like he's not going to play. He didn't look. He certainly lo- didn't look super prepared to play compared to some of the other guys. Malik Malik Willis after that at fifty to one. But then Sam Howell. Sam Howell looked the best. You could make a pretty easy case. Seventy to one. Are you kidding me? Come on, let's go. Anyway, it's a Titans podcast. Derrick Henry most rushing. Tighten up. Well, last time I picked them to do shitty. Titans fans, you guys went to the AFC Championship. So, (laughs) and I think that time it was five wins. So I've upped the ante to six wins. Uh, Derrick Henry rushing title. Is that worth it? What price are you buying that? Okay, I don't. I. Really don't know the price, but like you said, he was in what place last year? Only playing eight games. <laughs> I'll say ten to one. It's six fifty. Oh man, that's close. But like, think that's about interesting. It. Okay, so sure, injury case, the yep. team probably craters, and we can bet like an alt under seven wins at plus three fifty. Okay. Then you take Henry. Mo- if Henry stays healthy, d- does he lose the rushing title? I mean, I like Najee Harris because of the volume, but if, if Dude, you, how if many you can, games did he play last year? If you can tell me, Der- Derrick Henry is playing seventeen games. How does he? Like, you point, imagine if you had that in your pocket with three games to go, mm-hmm. and he's hurt, but he's like eight hundred yards ahead of everyone. <laughs> there is there is a but world where he clinches it at like I'm week fourteen. I'm gonna write it down. I I'm one hundred percent. I think that's one we shop when we go out to Vegas. They'll yeah. be. And we we get down on because we probably can find find a better price than that. All right, uh, so the alt. So uh, I'm not touching the alts because I barely un- got them going. Yeah, on. so but un- you should go at under alt. eight is plus two hundred. Under seven, is it worth going down to seven? Probably not. I'll just go eight two hundred. 
Okay. That's that's uh you there was something you wanted to talk about. Which ones? I don't know. I, I feel like you you asked me for something and then we started talking about something else. Uh all right, but I can keep going. Um uh, this is another so another way you could potentially Oh no, it, it was just my Malik Willis fifty oh, one. Got it, got it, got it. Oh yeah, let me write. Want to make down. sure I didn't got that in. Fifty to one. How how many games does he have to play? Oh my God. I think like seven. Oh, you think that's got it's more than that? No, if he if he wins five games as a starter and looks pretty good, I, I you're also somewhat banking on the fact that um that none of the other like receivers are a clear cut thing, and and, and uh, it's well, what who do you like? Running right? back, you got to. Well, See, well, in the case where tough. in the case where you're talking about though, if if any of the running backs have a decent season, like my boy Damian Pierce, I I think that would open the door for a running back. That's all. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't have, I don't have a ton of other other plays on the Titans. I think for me, it's just I'm, I'm it's a hard fade. I guess you can talk me into. I mean, we've looked at this for most teams, so I guess we'll look at it here too. But fewest wins, um, is it, are, do you think they're in the market for fewest wins? No, not at all. I'm going ten and seven. I think you're a maniac. And I'm trying. I'm trying to find it. Stalling. Fewest wins. Well, Ryan Stalling, uh, hey, get in your entry for Merch Monday. Just take a screenshot of you. Submitting a review to Apple Podcasts. Open up your SGPN app. Click contest. Oh. Submit the screenshot, and uh, you are good to go. We just uh, gave out a Merch Monday today, so congrats. I'm pulling up his uh, his name here in case he missed the uh, email. I, I can't wait to to review how many teams I've given out fewest wins for. <laughs> Over under number of teams <laughs> Ryan has predicted fifty to wins. one. I'd rather have the Cowboys at fifty at a hundred to one. Fifty to one. I'm in. All right, Ryan. They got Derrick Henry and Mike Vrabel and like a decent defense. Like that, just all, all that can't collapse at the same time. Yeah, it can. I, I like they let it. a lot of people go, Sean. I know, I know, but I'm really letting my Texans love <laughs> bias get in here. And the fact that right. you're 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 writing off a week one loss to the Giants in there. <laughs> you're you're really projecting a lot here. I'm trying to talk All a right. little sense in you. Houston Texans. Oh, sorry, I did, I was at the wrong one. Houston Texans finish first. Colts finish second. Wait, is that right? Do we like the Colts to finish second? Yes. Colts finish second. Titans finish third. Jags finish fourth. What do, what do you think a fair market value pr, uh, pr on that one is? So wait, you said Texans first. Texans first, followed by the Colts, Colts then the Titans, then the Jags. Hundred to one. Yeah, it's it's only fifty to one. I. It's not worth to, betting. I mean, the, the Texans the alone are thirty to one. What? That's a horrible one. I know. That's. I. I just wanted to bring it up. I'm disappointed. We're Tre Trevor in the YouTube chat guessed two hundred to one. We're drawing too much attention to these sweet, sweet. <laughs> it's like uh, uh, Sean. Do you remember yes. what happened last year? Once we hit Aaron Jones, forty-five to one, three touchdowns. That price was like twelve to one for the rest oh of the God. season. Yeah. Market instigators. Insane. What uh, else? Anything else? No, I mean, nothing. We, else. Oh yeah, we got it. That, that's it. We're good. We're good, and uh, we'll be breaking down more stuff when we talk division previews. Give out our locks for these win totals. Hey, subscribe, rate, review, get in your merch Monday action. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. Tighten up, bitches. Kramer, let it ride.